Hi, welcome to Now in Android, episode number 34. I'm Manuel Bivo, part of the Android Developer Relations team, and I will be your host today. A lot of things happened since the previous episode, so let's start talking about the math skill series first. The series on motion layout has come to an end. In the fourth episode, Sean McQuillan explains how to build a collapsible toolbar using motion layout. Along the way, you will learn how to animate custom attributes using this API. The final episode was, no surprise here, a live Q&A with motion layout experts from the developer relations and engineering teams. You can catch the recording if you haven't already. So what's next in Matt? Well, I heard that the next series is going to be about work manager. So if you need to execute any deferred or immediate tasks, you can use this API. So watch out for this uh, series in the future. Apart from Matt, we had a bunch of library releases happening during this, this time. And the first one is about material design components. This library reached version 1.3.0 as stable. And it brings new material components, such as material time picker and progress indicator. Other updates include localization of strings inside some components, like dialogues. If you are interested in everything that happened there, you can check out the release notes. There was an important alpha release happening as well last week, and it was about the Kotlin Symbol Processing Library, KSP. KSP is a tool for building lightweight compiler plugins in Kotlin. If you are familiar with annotation processors, KSP offers similar functionality to KAPT, but it is up to two times faster and obviously is built with Kotlin multi-platform in mind. So if you are the author of a library that uses annotation processing, see the blog post for more information on how you can make your, your library KSP compatible. A lot of Android X releases happened as every other two weeks, and Android X uh, comes with some stable releases this time. Activity 1.2.0 brings the new Activity Result APIs. These APIs are going to bring type safety and better testing to the start activity for result and request permissions flows. Apart from this, component activity is going to implement the context aware interface that can give you a hook before super.onCreate is called. Another release was Fragment 1.3.0, and a lot, of change, a lot of things changed in this version. Notably, it brings a new state manager, which involves pretty much a complete rewrite of the internals of Fragment Manager. So this gives give this a go. It also is going to add support for Activity 1.2.0, and it's going to add the new Fragment Results APIs, pretty much the equivalence of the Activity APIs. And considerably, it's going to improve Fragment Scenario, so that you can better test your fragments here. Lifecycle 2.3.0 also reads stable, and it adds safe state handle support for non-parcelable classes. There are lifecycle state and event helpers in this uh, library, for example, to see how events relate to each other, but also other nice things like the with state at least suspend functions that are going to execute a block of code, a block of code whenever the lifecycle reaches a certain state. There is another release that I want to give a shout out, and that's Paging 3. Paging 3 has reached the first beta version here. So as you may know, Paging 3 has been a huge rewrite in Kotlin that embraces coroutines at the fundamental level. And because now it is in beta, the APIs have reached API stability. So in case you want to migrate to stable in the future, there will be pretty much no migration path there. Apart from library releases, we had a bunch of articles and talks coming out. We have Bridging the Gap Between Coroutines, Threats, and Concurrency Problems, written by me. Here, I wrote this article because I wanted to demystify how coroutines are actually executed on the Android runtime. But from that, there are some watchouts to look out for, for example, like concurrency issues. Of course, like if you are in a multi-threaded environment, if you try to mutate a, a variable from different threads, that can cause some problems. You have pr to protect uh, accessing the value. So you want to, if you are, you want to learn more about it. Please uh, read the blog post. There is a new talk uh, about adapting your apps for Android 11 privacy changes. Of course, privacy continues to be a top priority in Android. And here, Fred Chang's talk is going to cover some of the user fancy changes, but also this is mainly meant for developers. So you're going to see new APIs, behavior changes, as well as testing. 
So for example, if you're interested in the new one-time permission change, you have to check out this talk. Another blog post was Android Nesting Intents, uh, written by Nikki Borelli, that explains why you should use pending intents in instead of intents whenever you have inter-app callbacks. Spoiler alert, if you don't do this, you can leave your app vulnerable. Um, you might not want to do that. We had a couple of announcements, pretty nice uh, announcements that we want to stand out. This one is about uh, app quality. Application quality matters to everyone, both users and, and developers. So we released a new app quality page in our developer site that is going to help you keep up to date with key aspects of app quality. And we're going to provide related resources on how to achieve and maintain this high quality in your app. We have this core app quality checklist that is going to help you assess your application in terms of visual experience, functionality, performance and stability, privacy and security, and Google Play. Obviously, these are great assets, assets to share with your team, for example, QA or, or design, so that everyone is on the same page. Going forward, we want to update this checklist regularly to keep it up to date with everything that is going on in the Android world. Of course, we want to extend this as well to other M4 factors, such as tablets and Wear OS. The other, the other announcement I wanted to make is about education. We want to make learning Android development accessible to everyone in the world. So a new curriculum for Android development with Kotlin is now available for educators to teach Android development in a classroom setting. So it's going to include many materials from you know, uh, lecture slides to hands-on code labs. So if you're interested, go and check it out. But also, we know that people prefer to learn in peer groups as well. So we opened up the Android Study Jams program to make it available as well to everyone. So this content is going to enable a group of people to come together and learn Android at their own pace through an online curriculum. And that's pretty much everything I had to, to share today. Uh, all the links of everything I mentioned today, it's in the blog post in the in Medium, the Android, now in Android episode 34 blog post. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the Android Developer channel in YouTube. Bye.